Well, hello, everybody. I'm here today with Lauren Stiles of Dysautonomia International and Dr. Steve Vernino of UT Southwestern. And we are so excited to be here to announce our joint grant with Dysautonomia International, our awardee, Dr. Steve Vernino. So everybody, I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to both of them so that we can understand the opportunity ahead for people who might have POTS along with their Sjogren's. So let's kind of go ahead and get started. Um, you all know what Sjogren's is. You are patients of, of Sjogren's disease. Um, and you also probably know that there is a lot of involvement for what we call dysautonomia. In fact, many of you participated in our November conference all about dysautonomia and Sjogren's. But what this program is funding is Dr. Vernino's research on POTS and Sjogren's, as well as um, his continued research on uh, IVIG for autoimmune patients uh, that have POTS. But first, I thought it would be great to introduce Lauren Stiles and have her tell us a little bit about Dysautonomia International and what is POTS. Lauren. Hi. So I am a Sjogren's patient who happens to have dysautonomia uh, that took the form of POTS. Dysautonomia International is a nonprofit that advocates much like the Sjogren's Foundation for, for people who have autonomic nervous system disorders. Um, dysautonomia itself is not a specific diagnosis. It's like a class of diagnoses, sort of like cancer is not a specific diagnosis. There's a whole bunch of different types of cancer. So if, if a doctor says, I think you have dysautonomia, you should ask them what type of dysautonomia. And sometimes they have the skills to tell you that. And sometimes they don't, but, um, Dr. Vernino is the type of doctor who knows how to figure out exactly what type of dysautonomia you have. And um, there's a, a large overlap between Sjogren's and dysautonomia that we're still figuring out. I'd say it's not fully understood. And that's part of uh, what the study is going to do. And also um, trying to understand if we give people IVIG, which is intravenous immunoglobulin, whether that helps improve their POT symptoms or, or their Sjogren's symptoms or both, hopefully. So um, I don't know if I answered what is POTS, but POTS well, is a that's okay. We'll have Dr. Vernino talk about that a little bit. Dr. Vernino, why don't you tell us uh, what POTS is and what your study is all about? Sure. Well, thanks. And first of all, thanks for the opportunity to talk and, and also for the support of our research program. I think it's, you know, it's, it's important, particularly for pilot studies, to have this kind of grassroots or foundation support to get these things kicked off. Um, so uh, we are interested in the, the mechanisms that, that may underlie dysautonomia and POTS. POTS refers to an inappropriate increase of heart rate when people stand up associated with symptoms. So whenever any of us stand up, the, the blood in our body you know, gravitationally likes to go down. Uh, and it's a responsibility of our autonomic nervous system to, uh, to change its uh, signals to the body to make sure that we get continued good blood flow to our brain so we can think and move around. Um, sometimes if that's not working right, the blood pressure drops too low. Other times, as in, as in POTS, the blood pressure may be okay, but the heart rate inappropriately goes very high. Um, and you know, operationally, we define POTS as being an inappropriate increase of heart rate of 30 beats per minute or more in adults without a change in blood pressure associated with symptoms such as dizziness, lightheadedness, feel like you're going to faint, but can be lots of other symptoms as well. And so, um, so that, that's, that's POTS. And I think as we alluded to, uh, POTS or postural tachycardia syndrome can have lots of different causes, um, but one we're interested in is whether this association with immune system disorders. So the idea being when there's autoimmunity going on, there's inflammation in the body, there may be antibodies floating around that are either inhibiting directly the function of the autonomic nervous system or, or somehow changing uh, the body's um, uh, stress responses such that the one part of the auto autonomic nervous system is overactive and another is underactive or something of that nature. And we're learning a lot more over the years that there's a close relationship between the autonomic nerves and the immune system, that the immune system you know, uh, influences what the autonomic nervous system does. And, and the autonomic nerves actually have signals that go to the immune system. Uh, so it's a close uh, interrelated system. So, so in POTS, we've recognized that a number of patients have abnormal antibodies, and they may have other autoimmune diseases, and probably the most recognized association of autoimmune diseases is POTS in Sjogren's uh, disease. And so um, 
we recognize that uh, association. So we started this study uh, to look at IVIG, which is an immune modulating treatment to see in those selected patients who had POTS in the, in the context of autoimmunity, if IVIG uh, would be uh, beneficial and specifically better than uh, another um, intravenous infusion of, of something else, because uh, we're really interested in the immune modulatory effects. Um, so uh, when we, whenever we see POTS patients in our clinic and we ask them various questions, some of those questions include you know, symptoms of dry eyes or dry mouth, joint problems, skin rashes, other things that might say, you know, there's something going on here that may reflect the immune system. Uh, and then that you know, follows with some uh, serological testing for things like Sjogren's antibodies, and in some cases, a lip biopsy or skin biopsy and other things. Um, so we screen for that. Uh, we don't always find Sjogren's syndrome, or even when we suspect it, uh, we're, we, we aren't able to prove it. Uh, but, but there's enough evidence there that you know, the, these sorts of patients are the ones we want to treat in our IVIG trial. Um, uh, I think one thing that we recognize is that many times patients show up at the rheumatologist and they get a diagnosis of Sjogren's disease, um, and the rheumatologist may not be as uh, attuned to the idea that there may be symptoms of dysautonomia going on that they may want to pay attention to or address separately from the, um, you know, the, the core features of Sjogren's. Um, so anyway, uh, our study is to really look at this treatment, IVIG, in what we call a double-blind uh, crossover design study, meaning that uh, double line means that the, the patient and the doctor, neither of us know which treatment you're getting. Uh, but because it's a crossover design, every patient gets the gets one treatment and then gets the other treatment. And it's the order uh, that's determined by random chance. Uh, and then we just evaluate the symptoms and various other uh, markers uh, along the way to see if we can detect uh, a, a symptomatic response or a um, objective response in terms of the, the various markers that we, that we can find. So, so that's the study. Um, <clears throat> we are looking, we're still, we're enrolling. This study has been going on for a little while, but uh, we are looking to enroll more patients and particularly interested in enrolling patients who have Sjogren's disease diagnosis. Um, I will point out that they are always welcome in the study, but um, it's uh, because of the way uh, they are recruited through our autonomic clinic we, we aren't recruiting as many Sjogren's disease patients as we think are out there. And so we're making uh, an extra effort now as we recruit the second half of the study to, to uh, encourage uh, patients with Sjogren's uh, either directly or through our rheumatology colleagues to uh, try to get those patients in for an evaluation. If they suspect they may have POTS or if they're not sure uh, you know, what, what's going on with them. Um, so uh, there, there's various ways to do that. I will point out that because this study involves infusions and it involves a lot of research visits, we're really, um, practically speaking, recruiting from the Dallas area. Um, uh, patients have to come for a number of study, a number of research visits and for infusions. And so it's only practical uh, for patients who are kind of within a two hour radius from Dallas, although we've had a few a bit further out, but it is a, um, you know, it's, it poses some difficulties in terms of transportation and so on. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And um, I just want to repeat, Sjogren's patients, this is an opportunity to join a, a, a research project that has been going on um, with IVIG and autoimmune patients with POTS. Um, and we had the good fortune to be able to partner with Dysautonomia International, uh, who has put up $100,000 for the continued research. And we have joined as the Sjogren's Foundation, $50,000 for the Sjogren specific portion of this. And we need you, if you're in the Dallas area and you know you have Sjogren's and POTS or know you have Sjogren's and suspect you have POTS, please go ahead and get in touch with Dr. Renino's office. And we're going to put the information in the um, uh, website and on our social media. So you have good contact information to ask your questions uh, and to see if you can participate. So um, with that, Dr. Renino, uh, congratulations on the grant award. We're more than thrilled to be able to take part in this and to learn more about uh, POTS and Sjogren's and if IVIG has an, a positive impact. Um, as uh, uh, I know Lauren uh, communicates to her audience, 
research is all about learning and it is a long, long game. Uh, and the more we start learning now about POTS and Sjogren's, um, the, the better. So uh, uh, we look forward to, to learning more. And Lauren, is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, probably just for Sjogren's patients who don't know what POTS or dysautonomia is, and they're thinking, I live in Dallas, maybe I want to be in this study. Um, a hint that you might have POTS and that you should get screened for it is if you have frequent lightheadedness when you stand up, a racing heartbeat when you stand up, um, you feel maybe kind of dizzy. Some people would say lightheadedness, some people would say dizziness, but the, the classic POTS symptoms are frequent lightheadedness and a racing heartbeat when you stand up. So if you have that and you have Sjogren's, you, even if you don't wanna be in this study, you might wanna get checked out by Dr. Vernino's autonomic lab uh, in any event. Uh, absolutely. Or if you're outside of the region, um, uh, get checked out by a neurologist because uh, the more you know about your disease and the impact on your own body, uh, the more you can do about it. So, uh, Dr. Renino, thank you. Thank you again. Um, I just so look forward to working with you long term and learning from you. And Lauren, um, it's an uh, honor to be partnering on this. And um, thank you for allowing us to join you on this grant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both.